guys! March was such an active reading month for me. I participated in two readathons in Otakuathon and the Fantasy Adventureathon, and I had so much fun. I haven't participated in a readathon in forever. The only ones I've ever done are the 24 and 48, which I did maybe twice, and that was last year or two years ago. So I haven't really participated in any that have been themed with specific challenges. So it was a really interesting experience for me this month and I read so much. I am actually very proud of myself for how much I read and I had so much fun doing it. So the first manga I read was Akuma de Koishio by Anashin and this fulfilled challenge 7 which is to read another work by an author you've read before. And the English title is I'll Fall in Love with Devil or Fall in Love with the Bad Boy. It doesn't actually have like an official English title, so it's just like the translations. And based on those translations, I should have known that this would not be quite my kind of love story. I am not super big on the bad boy type. So, I mean, it's okay sometimes, but it can be done very, very poorly. And this one wasn't done poorly in that sense. It's a short one volume high school shoujo romance and I actually have a hard time saying what it's about because there wasn't really much to the story. I can't really tell you what happens in it because not very much happens and there's no real plot outside of just this love story. It had a predictable plot and I think it was a bit underdeveloped especially in terms of the characters because they were very weirdly incongruous, like their character personalities didn't really match up throughout the different chapters, which is surprising because it's only like four chapters, it's one volume, and even with that the characters don't really maintain their sort of motivations and personality and their reactions throughout these like four chapters. So that was very odd for me, it didn't really feel like they were fully fleshed out and then there wasn't much happening with the story that you couldn't predict. So that overall just made it an okay read. I feel like it's one of the earlier works of Anashin. Anashin also writes um, Harumatsu Bokura or Waiting for Spring, which I also read for Otakuathon and I really love that series. I'll go more into it later, but it's a very fun and light series that I'm really enjoying and it's definitely much better in terms of both the plot and the character development than this story was. But it was fine, and it was quick, and it fulfilled one of my challenges. Next, I read one volume of Ototo no Oto, or My Brother's Husband, by Tagame Gengoro. And I was using this to fulfill challenge two, which was to catch up on a series you're behind on, but I didn't realize that I only had one of the two final volumes. I only had volume three. Um, so I couldn't quite catch up with that, and it was kind of like a half a fill challenge, but I have something later on that ended up fulfilling this challenge anyway. I've talked about this series before in my last month's wrap-up. I still enjoy this story. It's really sweet, and it has so many important messages, and it's a good piece of work. It's adorable and fun, and I think it's just a cute story. So I plan to finish it once I can get my hands on the actual second volume and read the last section of it. Next, I read a few volumes of Ten Dance by Inoue Sato, and this fulfills challenge five, which is to start a new series, and I am really enjoying this series so far. It's about two experts in the two different styles of ballroom dancing, Latin and traditional, that are teaching each other their field of expertise, and it's so fun and amazing, and I love it. <laughs> It's hilarious and the dancing is incredible. The art is really different from anything I've read before. There's a lot stronger lines than I'm used to seeing in shoujo, so that's been an interesting change of pace. I feel like the plot isn't set up as nicely as I would like it to. There's a lot of references to competitions without actually like delving into them. Not that I would necessarily want to go into the competition aspect so much, but it seems like they're just kind of like popping up and then disappearing and then popping up and disappearing and I don't know, maybe ballroom dancing is just that like fast paced that every week there's a competition that you're like going to and then finishing and going to again. I don't know. It's definitely a lot more relationship focused so it's you don't really get 
one of these characters without the other you'll see how they interact and how they talk to each other and how they're teaching each other and everything and then if one of them goes off to a competition you're still seeing it from the other person's perspective so it's kind of told in this balance between the two of them but also at the same time like they're not always together and it kind of feels like it scatters the plot a little bit because they're just kind of like flitting to each of these competitions and coming back and then you're not really getting a full timeline I think it's not very clear how much time has passed and that might be what my problem is because I don't really know where the story is going so much I still really like it because I am a character person and I love seeing character interactions so I live for the parts where they're teaching each other their dancing I love it so much it's great but I think it could be structured a little bit better. I definitely plan to continue the series though. Next I read volumes 2 and 3 of Yagate Kimi ni Naru or Bloom Into You by Nakatani Nio and this fulfilled challenges 1 and 6 for me where challenge 1 was your most recently acquired or queued and challenge 6 was a recommendation. And Bloom Into You is about a girl who can't fall in love and another girl who's in love with her. It's a shoujo romance and it's really adorable and sweet. I'm enjoying it, but I'm not super drawn to it for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. I think it's really interesting and the characters are all interesting and dynamic. And I like the slice of life plot. I don't know what it is that's making me not quite click with the story. I think I'm going to try watching the anime and see how that goes, otherwise I will probably get through the manga, but I'll probably read it at a slower pace. For challenge 3, which is a manga adaptation of an anime or an anime adaptation of a manga, I used Maggie Volume 34 by Shinobu Otaka, and this is an Arabian Nights retelling with a group of young friends going on an adventure, and it's a lot of fun, but at the this point it's kind of wrapping up the story and it's getting so convoluted. I think the story has just kind of gotten out of hand at this point. I really loved the first couple story arcs. Actually I really loved the anime which is why I picked this up in the first place because the anime is two seasons long and it doesn't finish the story and I wanted to know what happens next but it turns out I'm not liking what's happening next. So I think I prefer the anime much more, partially because I like watching shonen rather than reading it. The fight scenes in this are kind of hard to follow and they make it very confusing and I don't know what's happening. So I would rather watch it animated than read it and it's kind of put me off of shonen manga in general. But outside of that, the plot at this point in the story, like almost near the end, it's just gotten so big and so kind of almost ridiculous that I, I don't know. I really like the characters still and my favorite part about this volume was seeing the character dynamics and the team pairings that ended up happening here. That was so much fun, but uh, the plot is just kind of a mess at this point in my opinion. I wish it wasn't. I wish it was wrapped up a little bit nicer, but everything is kind of going insane. And I still plan to finish the story because, I mean, three volumes. I can last another, like, three volumes. So we'll see. I don't know. I feel like I'm just not going to like this ending. I like the beginning better. And then to actually finish challenge 2, which is to catch up on a manga you're behind on, I read Waiting for Spring, volume 10, or Harumatsu Bokura, volume 10, by Anashin, and this was so much fun. I loved it so much. Oh my god, the end killed me. It was so cute. I was dying. Oh my god. It was great. It's a high school shoujo romance, which is like my thing, and the characters are so cute. I love the friend group. Again, my thing and I just have so much fun with it that's not anything like super mind-blowing and it's not super intense or anything it's just sweet and adorable and fun and I love it so much <laughs> it's the classic adorable hot springs volume and it makes me want to squeal <laughs> Asakuro-kun is such an airhead and he doesn't really have like a strong personality I don't know but 
you love him anyway, and I don't know how, I, I don't know, it's just cute, and I'm enjoying myself so much, and I don't know when the next volume is going to come out, because volume 10 was just released, I think, last month, so when's volume 11? I don't know, I should probably look that up, because mm, it's so cute. <laughs> That was my favorite read of the readathon for sure. So there were two more challenges for that readathon. The challenge eight was a genre of your choice, and I used an anime for this one. So I watched a couple episodes of The Disastrous Life of Psyche K, which is so good. At this point, I finished the series, and I was a little bit disappointed by the ending. It kind of came out of nowhere. It was very abrupt. I was just expecting, like, a full another season when Netflix said season three is now available and then season three ended up being like two episodes and I was very confused but the actual content of the series the actual episodes and the main story story <laughs> is so good it's so much fun it's about a boy who's a psychic and he has like all these super strong powers and everything and he just wants to be a normal person so he's trying to like stay under the radar at high school but all of these like weird people are attracted to him for some reason and it makes his life very not normal and it's just it's a hilarious it's so funny these characters are amazing and the situations that they get themselves into is just so great it's more of a slice of life, but it's also like sort of fantasy because you have the psychic who's like all powerful and it's great. It's hilarious. <laughs> and I loved it so much. If only the ending wasn't that sad. I don't know. Not sad. Sad to me because I, I think it deserved more. But the last challenge was challenge four, which is to revisit an old favorite. And I was planning to read Fruits Basket by Takaya Natsuki for this, and I didn't end up getting to that during the four-day readathon. I didn't start it, but later in the month, I did reread the whole series, and oh my god. <laughs> I have a full reading vlog up that follows everything, my whole experience reading through all 12 volumes again. Hi, sorry, quick insert from Future Me. I don't know why the heck I didn't think to hold up my two copies of Fruits Basket while I was talking about Fruits Basket. What's wrong with me? Bad booktuber. Pretend I was holding this the whole time. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. It's one of my favorite series of all time. I love it so, so much. The anime, ah, it's coming out on Friday, which is five days away from me. It's gonna be the day that I upload this. Go watch the anime, oh my god. I am going absolutely insane. It's... I'm so excited! <laughs> if you need more convincing, aka like what the story is even about in the first place, it's a high school shoujo with fantasy elements. It's about a girl who has been recently orphaned and she gets taken in by this mysterious family that is cursed by the spirits of the zodiac and it's so emotional. It's hilarious, it's sad, it's intense and hard-hitting and also just sweet and funny and it's so many things. There are so many characters that everyone can relate to on some level and the interactions between the characters is just so adorable and hilarious and I honestly I love it so much. If you couldn't tell already, Please watch the new anime. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. If you want more of my thoughts on it, check my reading vlog because I... But that completes Otaku-a-thon. I got to seven out of eight challenges, which isn't too bad, especially considering I ended up reading the manga that I was going to use for that last challenge later on in the month. So I was very happy with that. I had so much fun. And then I continued reading at least one more manga later on in the month, which was Tomo-chan is a Girl by Yanagida Fumita, and it's about two childhood friends who fall in love, and it's freaking hilarious. I have been reading a lot of comedy, or comedy at least mixed into a high school shoujo romance. So at this point in the story, they're kind of developing their relationship and learning how 
being in a relationship is different from them being childhood friends and it's just so cute and so hilarious and oh my god it makes me laugh out loud so much I love it. I love it so much. Wow, I read a lot of really good manga this month. These things are just like making me so inarticulate and I'm just squealing the whole time. I am very sorry, but I have very strong emotions and I react very strongly to manga more than with books and I don't really know why. I just discovered that this month, so. But I would highly recommend Tomo-chan and Fruits Basket and Waiting for Spring, the three that I've been squealing about. Those were my favorites. And then after all of that manga, I started missing my fantasy books, which is my main true love. So that was perfect timing for the fantasy adventure a thon. I was on Team Mermaid and I made a TBR of about five to six books and I did not read all of those. <laughs> I didn't think I would be able to, but I had hoped that I would read at least three. Work got absolutely insane. It was a freaking nightmare and it still is so that's great but I ended up finishing two books I DNF'd one book and then I started two more so I'd say that's still pretty good it ended up being around 876 pages so more than I normally read in a week for sure and I had a lot of fun talking to everyone in the discord chat and on Twitter and everything so the first book that I finished finished <laughs> Early in the week was a DNF. That was The Well-Tempered Clavicle by Piers Anthony. This book. This book made me so angry. This is the 35th book in the Xanth series, and the Xanth series is the series that made me a reader and that made me love fantasy. That's why this was such a incredible disappointment to me because I love this world. It's a magic world based on puns and it was hilarious and it followed so many characters that I really enjoyed when I was younger and now that I'm older reading this, this was very bad. I normally don't rate books that I DNF because I didn't finish them and I don't know what they're like, but with the 65 pages I read of this book, I gave this one star because it's atrocious. The writing is really simplistic. It's mainly like a he said, she said kind of thing and the dialogue is awful and inorganic and terribly written. The storytelling is so bad. It has like foreshadowing that's just really like hitting you over the head with a pile of bricks. The sentence structure is awful and simple and boring and repetitive. I was mad just reading the syntax of this book, let alone the actual content, which was terrible. The puns are not funny anymore. The characters have no depth and no personality. Literally anyone could be talking and it could be any of the party that was in there, the party of like five characters. It could have been any of them. It wouldn't have mattered. They all sound exactly the same. And one of the most annoying things about this book that eventually made me give up completely is everything is so hypersexualized. Everything is about, oh, this girl's panties or showing their bra or, oh my gosh, you wanna have sex with me? Oh my God, you're naked, where are my clothes? I was going to throw it, I was so mad. There was nothing good about this book at all and like every other paragraph, there's gonna be some mention to panties or like, oh, her curves were like nice for a human but not for a skeleton. Blah. God, it was, yeah, I hated this so much. And I knew that there were these traces of like this sexual whatever the f f bleh. throughout the series. It's like a common thing to have like a flash of panties freak out a man and then he's like knocked out for whatever. And I knew that was in the story because that's been in earlier books, but I was wondering if it was like to this extent and I just completely missed it because I was like 12 and honestly I shouldn't be reading that, I was 12 but whatever and I was wondering if I liked it so much as a kid because the writing was like simple and easy to understand for a kid even though the content is not 
good for a kid, but mm, no. Anyway, I skimmed the first book in the series that I really liked, and the writing has literally deteriorated in this. The first book is written so much better, and I don't know how. <laughs> it's like his writing got worse over the years. The first book was written in like the 80s. This was a series that my dad read as a teenager and that's why I knew it because he gave it to me. But it was started in the 80s and he's written, he's still writing. This one came out recently. 2011. I am further behind than I thought I was. Okay. This came out in 2011 and he has like another, I don't know, six out right now. He's been writing these for 30 years and somehow the quality has gotten worse, maybe because it's such a long series and you like run out of things to write about, but that would not deteriorate your writing skills. So I, I don't know what's happening with this book. I freaking hated it and I had the next two books in the series on my shelf. I'm getting rid of it actually. If I move oh, right here, this is my pile that I am donating and getting rid of and it has this book and the next two because I I can't I can't deal with it it was so bad Ugh. all right we're good okay yeah so DNF hate it don't pick this up you're free to try the first couple books because I We'll need to reread those again to make sure they're actually like good, but from what I was skimming in the beginning, it's much, 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 much better than this one. I, I don't know. I was pissed. I was pissed. I'm still pissed. <laughs> the first book that I actually completed was Stormglass by Jeff Wheeler, and this is about two girls who are living in this world that's run by the mysteries, which is kind of like a mixture of science and magic, I think. It was never actually explained, which is, I'll get into that later, but it's a world where the rich live on these like floating manors, which are like giant pieces of land that are literally floating in the sky and holding these big mansions. And then the poor live on the ground in these sort of slums. The world, I think, was really interesting. I was really interested in how it worked and how these mysteries worked and there was like a ghost element but my issue was that nothing was ever really explained like at all so i don't even know if it's like science or magic or it's both i think it's both but like nothing was explained with how the world works there's nothing explained with like the magic the ghosts weren't explained at all really and that was a little bit annoying because the most interesting part of the story for me was the world elements and I would have liked more about them because the plot didn't really have much substance it was mainly like an introduction to the characters and the world without really having like a main storyline which was okay with me I'm fine with slower stories because I like to focus on characters more but I had an issue with the characters as well. I have mentioned before, our two protagonists are these two 12 year old girls and they do not sound 12. They are not 12. They are not written 12. The only reason that they're 12 is because they say they're 12 and because the author needed some excuse to have them be powerless against older people and adults. Otherwise, their thought processes and their speech and literally everything else are indicative of like 17 to 19 years old. It just wouldn't work out with the story if they were 17 to 19, so they're 12. That's the only reason I can see them being 12. They are not 12. It bothered me a bit, if you couldn't tell. But other than that, I think it was a really interesting world and an interesting introduction. I don't know if I want to continue it because I wasn't super tied to the characters and I'm not getting any explanation for the world. Maybe in the later books there will be an explanation for the world, but I I don't know. I was just kind of lukewarm about it. I ended up giving it three stars. We'll see maybe if I'm bored or if I'm interested later on and I keep thinking about it. I'll go back to the series, but as of right now, I don't really have plans to continue. But this book did fulfill a lot of challenges for me. I used it for cliff, toad, and adventure. 
And the other book I finished for this readathon was The Obelisk Gate by N.K. Jemisin, and this is the second book in the Broken Earth trilogy. This is set in a world that's literally out to get humanity with its natural disasters, and the people have developed a sort of magic that allows them to control aspects of the earth and stone and energy. And it's a little hard to say what happens in this book because it's the second book in a series, but I will say that this was a lot more traditional of a story than the first one. It's a lot less time jumpy than the first one. The main issue I had with the first one was it was kind of like all over the place. This one follows a much more normal narrative structure where it's like chronological. It's a lot easier to get into since you already have the background from the first book and there's not as many questions, but there are still some and it's still confusing. I don't know which side is right and which side is wrong in this big like war debate thing that's happening and that's probably the point but it's so confusing and it's really frustrating like not knowing exactly everything that's happening or it's frustrating to me i also feel like i'm sometimes missing some subtext in this book where things aren't always explicitly stated on the page and it goes over my head until it's later confirmed explicitly so i'm like questioning my intelligence and it's a little bit off-putting because it makes me feel like i'm not fully grasping everything in the story which is probably the case because i am so confused so much of the time but also i think that's the point so i don't know it's a really confusing series for me because I know that it's very good. I can see objectively that it's very good, but my own experience with it is kind of like up and down and all over the place. I am really interested in what's happening at this point. I really am enjoying where it's going. I ended up giving this four out of five stars and I used it to complete my challenges for Fellowship, Bewilder, and Potions. I also started two more books, which were Guards, Guards by Terry Pratchett and The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin, but I didn't finish them in time, so I ended up having one challenge remaining, and that was Fate, and that was really frustrating because I was so close to finishing my path, and I couldn't do it because I needed to finish this book, and I couldn't work with insane so that was a lot i had so much fun participating in readathons this month and i'm going to participate in another one in april i would have already started at this point because it's april 1st today so you can probably guess which readathon it is that i'm joining i'm very excited for that but i'm also very happy with march's results and if you participated in any of these readathons please let me know i'd love to see how you did and i will talk to you later bye